you see a lot of professional riders now on YouTube that don't do basic foundational work with their horses and they just let their horses walk off and then they tell their audience that that's like a completely normal thing. It's not. Hey, bitch, and welcome back to another Let's Judge Horse Trainers video. Just a reminder, you guys, make sure to subscribe and turn your notifications on because every time I film one of these videos, I'm doing polls and the most suggested poll is chosen. Today's video, we are reacting to Free Spirit Equestrian on YouTube. Now, before we get into this video, little disclaimer. A lot of people have been wanting me to react to Yese and Shelby Dennis. The reason I'm not reacting to them is because I know them and I don't want to react to people that I'm already biased towards because I like both of them. I consider myself friends with both of them. So I have really nothing bad to say about them and I really like their training. Therefore, I just don't want to react to them not because of any negative reason, just because I'm biased already. So you guys would already know my opinion and my take on that. I'm only reacting to people that I don't know. And I've never seen Free Spirit Equestrian, never seen her videos. So I decided since she was the top suggestion, she is who we're reacting to in today's video. Let's get into it. So as always, let's read the bio because I have no idea who this is. Free Spirit Equestrian. Hey, horse lovers. If you love equestrian life, horse training, trail rides, auctions, and adventures, then you found the right channel. My name is Shay, and I own a little piece of heaven called Free Spirit Farm. My passion in life is working with horses from all different walks of life and revitalizing them through equine wellness training and care. I created this channel to help spread awareness about what goes on not only as an equestrian farm owner but also a trainer, instructor, and entrepreneur. In my videos, I try to be open and transparent about horse life, both good and bad. I truly dedicate all my time to my horses, training, riding program, and farm. Take a look inside what I do by subscribing to my channel. As always, enjoy the ride. That's a really good bio. I think my bio just says, hey, bitch, or something. <laughs> cute bio, cute horse. I've always wanted a leopard Appaloosa. That's what it looks like in her photo. A leopard Appaloosa is my dream. We're going to be reacting to her video called I Tacked Up My Auction Mare for the First Time. Then something happened. Training session. Hello, horse lovers. So today I'm going to be doing some groundwork with Bagheera and tacking her up for it the first time. Let's see how she does. Finishing your breakfast? Okay. So first I'm gonna start out grooming her. She is so fuzzy and soft right now. And I just think it's really great to spend time with her and bond and she definitely loves being groomed. So it's super enjoyable. So right now I'm using my metal curry brush just to get any dirt or anything like that off of her. And then I'm following up with my soft brush to sweep it away. She really enjoys the grooming process, so it makes it really enjoyable for both of us. And again, it's a really great way for us to establish a relationship. She's so sweet. Oh my God. <laughs> Firstly, I just, I have to say this, okay? Because this makes me want to cry. She's the first trainer that I've reacted to in a long time who talks about the importance of just grooming your horse and spending time with them. I can't tell you how many people's relationships would be fixed with their horses if they just spent more quality time with them. A lot of people rush through grooming to put a saddle on. You have an opportunity every day when you're out with your horse to spend just an additional 10 minutes while you're grooming to just really spend time with your horse and connect with them, brush them talk to them. It's just really a bonding moment. And I think a lot of people are just completely unaware that they're throwing away a very important moment that they could be bonding with their horse. And this is one of the reasons why you see a lot of horses and riders have disconnect 
And it's just because a lot of riders only go out to the barn to ride their horse and they don't actually spend quality time with them. You know, horses groom each other and that's a bonding method that they use. And now of course I'm gonna pick up all four of her hooves. She is perfect about this, an absolute angel. A lot of times Amish horses are really good with picking up their feet because they're done and they're just used to it. So that's really nice. Very good. Okay guys, now it's time for saddling and tacking up. So of course, first I'm gonna introduce the pad to her. Obviously she gets a hot pink pad with flowers. Pink is gonna be her color. I'm a pink girl, she's dark. She's gonna be gorgeous and the hottest pink tack I can find. So. <laughs> Yeah, so she was super cool with that. She kind of checked it out and then licked and chewed, so that was really awesome. And I'm just going really slow with this process, just making sure she's comfortable with each step. Okay, now I have my saddle. So I'm using my Black Country saddle on her. This is a hoop tree. She definitely has like large shoulders with a small wither, if any. And this will be a really good fit for her. I am actually gonna do her tracings before we ride because I am a saddle fitter. I don't know if you guys knew that, but I'm gonna be doing a saddle fitting series, so you'll be able to check that out. Um, in a couple weeks. And now I'm gonna introduce the girth. Yeah, that saddle actually looks like it fits her perfectly. It's amazing that she talks about saddle fit because a lot of people that get rescue horses buy them because they're cheap and they don't really know anything about horses or how to train. And one of the most important things is that if you're gonna ride a horse, particularly a rescue horse that has previous health issues, you need to make sure that the saddle fits. And that goes for any horse, but especially those that might have previous injuries because you don't wanna make that worse or exactly exacerbate the problem. So I'm just overall really happy. There's like nothing but green flags going off in my brain for this video. I don't know. It just makes me happy to see somebody who's just really wholesome. I always see people where I'm like, oh, I really like their training. In the next video, they're like beating the shit out of a horse. And I'm like, God damn it, people. Can you just be nice to horses? <laughs> she could care less about the girth when I showed it to her. So that's really good. So I'm just going to attach it on this side. I'm going to make sure not to tighten the cinch at all while she is tied because if she was to have a reaction and she was tied up, it could be worse and it could cause her to have trauma from that. So I'm just gonna keep it really, really, really loose, not tight at all. And then when I untie her and walk away, that's when I'll tighten her cinch. Yes, that is so important, okay? You see a lot of horses that just fall to the ground when people put cinches on them for the first time, which could be a nerve pinching reaction. It can also just be the horse is hyper stressed. The horses often when they freak out because they're not used to girths, they'll pull back in their halters and damage their pole. Yes, girl. Yes. I'm so happy. This is the first person I'm reacting to who's like, yes. She's hitting all the points too. This isn't even really something that she would have to say or mention. It's also important that when you do this, like after you have the cinch on because it's loose that you don't just like walk away and leave them because if she was to shake the saddle could slip under her belly and then you could cause a serious issue so just keep that in mind if you're working with any horse really but especially one that you're not sure what they'll do obviously she gets a treat <laughs> okay so as you can see i walked her away and she is ground tied right now and now i'm going to tighten the cinch and i'm obviously not just going to tighten it all the way and I'm adjusting the saddle and the pad too. Um, but anyways, you're not gonna just tighten it all the way. You're gonna do it little by little. Otherwise, you're gonna create a cinchy horse, especially when they're just getting used to everything. The last thing you wanna do when you're putting a saddle on is just tighten that cinch up right away. Like, no, 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 no. I end up tightening it like probably like between like four to 10 times or more depending on the horse. She's also been really good about the entire process so far. She's been awesome about taking the pad, the saddle, and now cinching up a little bit. And I'm just having it tight enough so it doesn't fall off when we're doing groundwork, but again, little by little. And I am gonna let the stirrups down so she can get used to that feeling of the stirrups being on her side. Cause again, I have no idea what she's actually done. I know she was a driving horse. And again, I don't even know if that's for sure, but I'm pretty sure that's true, but I have no idea otherwise. I love this. I love this so much. I love this because she's building trust with her horse, which is so important. You see so many people that just tighten the cinch up all the way the first time, particularly Western riders. They'll tighten the cinch up all the way, like super tight the first time, and just throw the horse in a round pin where they go run and buck and kick. 
again, you're losing trust with your horse by doing that because you're causing them pain and you're putting them in a situation that they have no idea how to react. They don't know what's on them. This was so much better handled. She just gently tightened the girth little by little over a period of several minutes with a very loose lead. And the horse was very calm. She was paying attention to what she was doing, but the horse overall was really calm and had no issues and that's exactly how it should be done if your horse is behaving like this you're doing it wrong and I can't tell you how many times I have to say that to people your horse should look exactly like this horse did the first time you put a saddle on them okay so now we're going to do a little bit of groundwork again I just want her to get used to moving with the saddle and the pad on her back and with the stirrups drop down at her side so we're just going to do a little bit of walk trot and see how she does So far, she doesn't seem to mind anything, so that's really awesome. She's being super calm, really go with the flow. She's definitely willing and in tune and trying to do everything I'm asking her to do. So it's super sweet. Also, if you're new to the channel and you haven't seen Bagheera's story yet, you really need to check it out. It's super interesting, and the link is in the description below. So sometimes Bagheera gets a little confused about stopping on the lunge, so I brought her in close to me. She got a little bit too close, so I backed her up, had her switch directions, and then I immediately had her stop again. Because I want her to turn and face me. She'll stop, but sometimes she won't face me. So I'm just keeping her close and just kind of drawing her back in after she halts. And that was a lot better there. Okay, so now we're going to do some trotting on the lunge. She does not seem to mind the saddle or pad or the stirrup, so that's a really good indication that she's comfortable. And again, she's trying really hard. She's trying to focus. So that just makes everything so much easier, and she's really just a pleasant mare to work with. And she's responding to my vocal cues, asking her to slow down. Really good looking shoe there, too. Okay, we're going back into trot again. So again, I'm just wanting to make sure that she's being responsive, again, that she's comfortable with the tack on, and just kind of going through what we've been doing previously, like with our groundwork, except just having the saddle and pad on. And again, she's being really cool. She, like I said, she's just really like go with the flow. And that's why I think she's gonna be just like a really good youth horse all around, like beginner safe lesson type. So we'll see, but that's definitely what I'm feeling. Now I'm having her trot in this direction because it's very important to do things on both sides, okay? So you really want to make sure that if you do something on one side, you do it on the other so that number one, the horse is balanced, and number two, they're used to you doing things on both sides. Really important there. And again, she's being responsive and really trying to tune in, being a really great girl. Also, if you're liking this channel and Bagheera's videos, please hit that like button because it'll help it spread to other people. And also if you comment, that helps it spread to people as well. We would really appreciate that. You know, for an Amish auction horse, she actually looks really good. I'm sure that she did a significant amount of rehabilitation work with her, and I think that's great, but she actually looks really good. I was looking that entire time for any subtle signs of lameness uh, or discomfort, and she doesn't really show hardly any. She seems to be moving pretty balanced and pretty nicely, and I kind of agree with her. I think she would make a really nice kid's horse, little lesson horse, pack somebody around. Bagheera is super relaxed right now. She just has her head nice and low. She's been licking and chewing. She's been responsive. All really, really good indicators that she's getting comfortable in her environment and that, you know, she enjoys that companionship and that relationship. So I'm really pleased with her. Okay, now it is time to bridle up. So this will be the first time, obviously, that I've bridled her. I'm going to remove the rope halter and just put a little snaffle in her mouth and see how she does. And then what I'm going to do is put the rope halter back over it and just have her do a little bit of walk trot on the lunge just to make sure there's no issues with her just carrying the bit. And then afterwards, we're going to do a little something else. And if you've made it this far, there is a surprise coming up. I'm excited. She did an absolutely excellent job taking the bit. I made sure to warm it up and it literally just took her one second. She opened her mouth and she was really cool about everything. I love her. 
All right, if you guys want me to find one thing in this video to disagree with, you already know what it is. I just don't agree with riding horses in bits, although I'm sure she's not abusive. This is just personal opinion, has nothing to do with her training. I don't like bits. I've made videos on why I don't like them. And honestly, the longer that I'm in vet school, the more I dislike them. <laughs> and there's a lot of reasons why, medically speaking, I don't like bits. And I think that the whole narrative, there's no such thing as a bad bit, only bad hands, is wrong. And honestly, the main reason why I don't like bits is just because I don't believe that horses need them. The only time I've ever seen a horse that needed a bit, it wasn't the horse, it was the rider. And the rider needed a bit because she had a shitty relationship with the horse, couldn't control the horse, didn't do any training with the horse at all. And that's not the horse's fault. But otherwise, everything's great. I love it. Okay, so back to groundwork. We're just again gonna do a little bit of walk trot. Mainly, I just wanna see if she fiddles with the bit at all, if there's any issues carrying it while she's moving. If, is she gonna be okay with the reins being on her side? Like all of those different kind of things. Just wanna, you know, evaluate her and see what her comfort level is. And so far, she's just like, yeah, whatever. Like, you know, this is no big deal. She's acting the exact same way she was acting before, nice and relaxed, responsive, not fiddling with the bit, nothing like that. So really, really good signs. I'm very excited for what the future holds for Bagheera and for our partnership and in the program. Again, I think she's gonna do well in the program once she is fine-tuned and settles in and she's comfortable and knows 100% that she's safe, you know what I mean? Uh, I cannot wait. Something that I teach all my horses while doing groundwork is if I go to my knees, I want them to stop and turn in. So I've been working on this with Bagheera. Um, she's not quite there yet, but it's really important that they stop and turn in because if I ever fall off, I've had so many horses like on the trail stop because when you're down, they understand that means stop. So something I've been working on. <laughs> Yes, that's actually a super good point that she makes. This is something that I teach all my horses too, only I teach them when I do emergency dismounts. So that way they associate me jumping off or me falling off with them needing to stop. So I do this with all of my horses. I even filmed a video with Braley on how I teach emergency dismount training to not just people, but horses as well. And horses pick up on it pretty immediately that they need to stop stop when you do an emergency dismount or that they need to stop if you fall. Basically, any time that you get off your horse or on your horse, your horse needs to be staying still. And this is just a safety measure. This is just making sure that your horse doesn't run off, making sure that your horse stays with you if you fall, if you have an emergency. I'm gonna give you guys an example. So I only have one kidney and I get dehydrated very easily and I have fallen off several times by blacking out because of dehydration, because I only have one kidney. And that's the reason why I broke my leg and my ankle. And something that is really important for me is whenever I go on trail rides, I always carry emergency gear in my saddlebags and cell phone and stuff like that. If I were to fall and have an emergency episode, I need my horse to stay there with me because the horse is carrying all that emergency gear in the saddlebags. And it's super important. So I totally agree with this. I do the same thing with my horses. I think it's really important and it's something that a lot of people don't think of. Okay, so now we're gonna do a little bit of in-hand work with her bridle on. Okay, normally I do not use my flag for this and that's why I'm holding the opposite end. My other whips were outside. So um, yeah, normally I do not use my flag, but that's why I'm holding it this way. So the flag doesn't freak her out like the first time we're doing this in-hand work. So basically what I'm doing here is when I put that whip on the shoulder, it means halt. I'm not using the bridle too much. I'm more so just using my energy and just a tiny bit with the bridle so she understands that means stop. And I think this is really, really important to do in hand work with horses. It builds their confidence, it promotes relaxation, and it allows them to have a better understanding in a more comfortable space, like with you on the ground. So as you can see here, I'm just gonna ask her to turn a little bit and then put my whip on and ask her to halt. And she did perfect there, that was really good. So when I put the whip behind her butt, it's basically like my leg kind of asking her to move forward. Like obviously your leg isn't gonna be on their butt, but when you're up there, that's kind of what it's acting like. 
and again asking her to halt with her shoulder this also comes in handy because if you go to put your hand on their shoulder sometimes they correlate that with stopping like under saddle so it's really good so our main focus during this in hand session was stopping going forward and stopping and again i'm just walking with her and very lightly asking her to turn a little bit here and use my whip to kind of keep her moving forward a little bit so she understands to keep walking and then i'll ask her to halt I think that is so important. I, I think it's really important that one of the first things that she's working on with her is stopping. This is another really overlooked training practice. Most people don't even think of this, but if you don't have brakes, you shouldn't be riding. Your horse should learn how to stop before they learn how to go. And I'm just being honest. And also to her point of doing in-hand work. Yeah, I agree. I think that's really important. It's vastly more important than riding because you have to have a good foundation on the ground in order to have a good foundation in the saddle. The majority of places where you see this neglect is usually in river crossings, water crossings, etc. I see so many riders that ride their horses up to water for the first time and then they just want to ride their horses through the water and the horse panics, jumps into the water, throws the rider. A myriad of bad things happen that could go seriously south and the reason is because they don't want to get off and walk them through the water and do actual end hand groundwork training with water. The first time that your horse sees water should not be when you're on their back because it's something that's scary and they don't know what it is. And it's going to make them even more scared if you're not walking with them into the water to show them that it's okay. Overall, I really, really like this. It's nice that she's now associating previous cues with future cues, so it helps the horse to better understand what the horse is learning. So we're just going to continue walking forward, halting, doing very slight bends and seeing how she responds to that. And after a couple minutes, she definitely was picking up on what I was asking her to do, which was really good. Super sweet. Now I'm just asking her to move her hindquarters a bit. She did really good. And I just want her to move them over again. And that's literally it. Just one little step, one little try really good. I'm not asking for much because she doesn't quite understand everything. She doesn't have the coordination, but just moving them over is a huge plus for the first time. Now I'm going to do the same with her shoulder. Again, I just want her to step a little bit over to the side. That's it. Perfect. Like really good. It's these baby steps that matter, guys. This is where it starts, especially for a horse that who knows what she's gone through or what she's done before. So I think overall that was a pretty good session. I'm really proud of her. She's such a good girl. And I will see you next time, horse lovers. I will be actually riding her when we post a video of her next. Say bye, Bagheera. See you guys. Yeah, bitch. I was about to be like, what the fuck happened to my surprise? I waited 11 minutes to not see one. So the session went so well that I decided we should end with some mounting. And you guys are gonna see how she does. This is my first time mounting her and I'm gonna hope it goes okay. Really hope that she's accepting and trusts me. Enough. I love that she did not grab the reins. Oh, I love that. It causes so many mixed signals for horses when you grab the reins while mounting, especially brand new horses. You should not be grabbing the reins when you mount your horse. Your horse should know that they need to stand still for you to get on them and that they shouldn't move until you give them cues to walk off, okay? None of this Aaron Williams shit, all right? I know that there's a lot of people who are pro riders that just let their horses walk off because they don't want to deal with it. No. Oh. Yes, I know it's very naughty that he walks off when you get on him before anyone comes at me again. But basically, I've tried so many times to stop him doing it, but we went through a phase like about a year ago where every time I tried to pull him backwards, he got a bit frisky and would rear up. So letting him walk on a step is the lesser of two evils. That is unacceptable. 
That is the definition of I'm going to get hurt one day because I don't want to train my horse. Your horse should be trained to stand still when you mount them. That is a very important thing to teach your horse. It's basic foundational training. And if you don't have basic foundational training, then there's something wrong. There is some sort of disconnect going on, and that is dangerous. Every horse that I ever ride, that I ever train and work with, stands still for me to get on them no matter what doesn't matter. They stand still and they stand still for as long as I need until I tell them to walk off. And that is just basic work. And it's important. It'll save your life one day. Trust me. Okay. So as you can see today, I'm just letting him stand here. No reins. He can uh, do whatever he wants to his head. Um, as you can see, this is the most important part about training your horse. I see so many people, and this is so overlooked, people who just let their horses walk off when they're mounting them, and it's so bad. Like, it's so bad to just let your horse walk off. So, as you can see, Link is being very, very patient, waiting for me to uh, start riding. He doesn't move until I ask him to move, which I think is so important. So I absolutely love this. I'm so happy to see something like this. It makes me happy because you see a lot of professional riders now on YouTube that don't do basic foundational work with their horses and they just let their horses walk off and then they tell their audience that that's like a completely normal thing. It's not. Your horse is badly trained and badly behaved and doesn't respect you. So she's being good, but she's kind of putting her head side to side. She's a little unsure, a little confused. Hey, why is someone on my back? And again, I don't know, besides like what I saw in the auction ring, what she's actually done. So we're just going to sit here for a second and see, you know, how she does and how she's going to react. She did it, guys. She's being awesome. I'm so happy. Oh, I love it. 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 I'm really happy to have witnessed something so wholesome and pure. <laughs> there was literally nothing wrong with that video at all. Everything that she said in her video, I think is absolutely great. I have nothing negative to say at all. Her training methods are great. I love them. I've used them myself. They work. They absolutely work. And I think overall, her calm demeanor fills the room and makes her horses calm as a result. You can just see how chill her horse is. Usually I tell people, be calm and relaxed when you're training horses. The more tense you are, the more aggressive you are, like Clinton Anderson and all those trainers, just the worse it's going to get for you. Horses feed off of your energy. Be like her, okay? I'm gonna link her channel below. I love her. I'm so glad that I got to witness that. And this was just one video of hers. I'm sure she has many other great ones, but I would definitely put her up there with my favorite trainers, absolutely. You don't have to be just this amazing world-renowned trainer to be a good trainer, and I think she's a good trainer. I think her channel is great, and I think the video is great, and I honestly rate her A+. It couldn't have been higher than that. Thank you so much, Free Spirit, for just making my day 20 billion times better. There's faith <laughs> restored in my life. I really was losing faith over the last few uh, months because I started seeing some higher up YouTubers in the equine space posting just really questionable videos. And I was like, great. <sighs> but I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Definitely check her out. But I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.